Dan Platter and I uh, work for the South East Council's Climate Change Alliance and I'm the project coordinator uh, for the Alliance and uh, tonight I'll be talking about uh, apartment blocks and how we can improve the energy efficiency. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Hopefully I can uh, inspire you but uh, also give you lots of uh, valuable information to take away with you. I work for nine councils in the South East and we all collaborate on climate change projects. We have a membership um, with the City of Port Phillip and uh, they all pay a membership fee to help fund us. So uh, we do a whole range of different projects. Typically it's about reducing energy and uh, adapting to climate change. So a lot of our projects uh, work within the community, so working for schools, uh, working for business and uh, also working directly for council. We've been integral in helping councils change over all their street lights over the last 10 years and um, uh, doing more work similar to that. So we also work with sporting clubs, uh, we're also doing a lot of work, work in transport as well. So any project that relates to reducing energy and uh, adapting to climate change is what we do. So the road to cheaper power bills. Um, first tonight I'd just like to give you an idea of, of who's in the room. Um, who lives in a detached house? One person, that's good because we are here about apartments. Um, who lives in an apartment uh, that is, uh, that you're not, no one's living above you, but is joined to another apartment? Okay, so about a third. And who lives in an apartment that uh, is, you have people living above you or below you? Okay, so about the rest. Okay, that's great. And who owns their apartment? Okay, great. So we've got mo mostly homeowners. All right, so that helps me just pitch what I'm talking about. Um, I'll cover a whole range of topics, but one of the main things I want to teach and talk about tonight uh, is uh, the general principles of how to reduce energy, energy efficiency. It all applies to apartments, houses, uh, you can be renting or you can be homeowning. Yes, there are limitations if you're a renter, um, but I'll refer to things you, you can do as a renter um, as we go along as well. But the first thing that we all can do is to get some good data. So you've all paid or you are renting a home that has a smart meter and uh, you can get access to that data. Who has access to uh, on your smartphone, uh, on your website, uh, to your data on a daily basis? One. Two, that's good, that makes this really relevant. So what, what it means is you can go to your, either your uh, retailer, the person you're signed up or the company you're signed up with, and you can go onto their website, uh, create an, a, a sign in or a login, and you can actually see all the data about your energy bills. So the first thing, you can't manage what you can't measure. So if you're aware of, of where you're using power and when you're using power, then you can start to make some decisions about how you can actually improve the efficiency of your home and uh, reduce your power bills. So the distributor, you'll either be a part of United Energy uh, or City Power, and uh, they also, they're the ones that actually uh, run the smart meters, and they're the ones that collect all the information uh, in those areas, and then uh, you can get access to their portal as well directly. So if you go onto United Energy's website, you'll find that uh, they have it on their front page, and with City Power, it's a bit harder to find. That's a really important one, is to understand where, where you're using your power, and when you're using your power. So from that, you'll be able to see when you get out of bed in the morning. When you turn the heater on, it'll spike up and you can understand that, okay, then you have a shower and it might spike up a little bit further. So uh, uh, that's really important information and that's what we would firstly assess and have a conversation with you if we were to come into your home and actually assess your home. We'd wanna see your energy data and uh, also your power bills. That tells us what tariff you're on and how much you're going to be spending uh, for, per kilowatt. Uh, and on that basis, we can um, start to advise you about how to reduce your power bills and look at areas in your home uh, that may be resulting directly in why your power uh, is being uh, used more or less. So also get the best deal. So we've all seen those uh, ads on telly. Um, some of them are quite good. Um, and I'm not advocating for, uh, that's not Serge, I think that's Alexander, um, to, to go to them necessarily. But that handout has all the different car uh, comparison websites that you can go to. There are public ones, or there's, there's ones that are for profit. Uh, there's also government ones as well. So you can go onto to those websites and see if you're getting the best deal. You can probably reduce your power bill
by 10% just upon looking at whether you're getting, paying a higher tariff than you really should be. Um, so I highly recommend that. That's the first thing we do when we go to anybody's home is again to look at what they're paying for power um, before we even look at energy efficiency. So some big wins there. Uh, and then obviously if you're, it depends on your motivation for reducing power. It could be that you want to pay less for your power bills, that might be a big driver for you. Uh, or it could be that you uh, care more about the environment and you're doing it for ethical reasons. Uh, and if that's the case, then I always talk about green power. So it may well be that then you don't have to reduce your power as much, uh, but you can go in there and purchase green power that comes from accredited places that produce solar or hydro uh, or wind power. So that's the first sort of step, if you like, in trying to reduce your power bills. So this is more of a general slide about what we're trying to do. This is the, the most inspirational part of the, uh, the talk tonight, uh, is what are the benefits of actually trying to reduce our bills. For a typical new home, we do a lot of work in the new home sector. I know that's not relevant tonight, uh, but uh, I, I want to just, if you like, cast a bit of a vision of where the market and where the industry uh, is headed. Uh, we are looking, what we're trying to achieve is, is net zero energy, uh, or carbon if you like, uh, whereby we uh, are not producing, uh, we're not using more energy than we actually need. So um, that's net zero. We're, we're not necessarily want to be connected or, or off the grid completely, whereby uh, we are completely um, generating the electricity when we need it. What we're saying here is that we feed power into the grid, we take it from the grid when we need it, but overall, uh, on a net sense, uh, we actually uh, put more power back into the grid. That's what we're trying to achieve as, a, as an industry. And um, the cost for a new home is about ten dollars to $20,000 on top of your build, which is not a huge amount of money. Um, it's about 2% of the build costs with paybacks between five and 10 years. So that's where all the growth areas, that's what the, the government and uh, what we as an organisation are trying to, to achieve. So um, when it comes to apartments, the good news is, is that comparative to other homes like these ones, uh, you'll probably find that you are a lot more energy efficient than they are. And it's purely for a couple of reasons. One is because you, you'll have a smaller area uh, to live in and you probably will have a shared party wall. And that means that you don't have windows on it and it'll be more highly insulated. So from an energy efficiency point of view, you're probably way ahead already from a lot of other um, places. Now that's not taking the, the shared spaces uh, but that's a whole other question. We're here to talk about your, your apartments today. So the benefits are, is that we obviously are reducing our, our power bills. There's a whole bunch of other co-benefits just beyond power bills and just beyond the environment. Uh, we, we're actually, you know, if you have a north facing window, uh, you can have beautiful sunshine come into your home. Uh, you can have a light, lighter house. It's a lot brighter. It's good for your mental health. And uh, it's less hot in summer uh, if you have double glazing you have less noise coming in. And uh, you also get less bugs and dust uh, and cleaning from having a home that's actually well draft sealed. So we're achieving all that in, in homes now when once before, if you've lived in properties where you know it's really drafty, it's cold, it's, it's, it uh, gets dirty easily, and uh, you have bugs in there, um, and we, we can actually avoid that. So you have some capital cost reductions as well. When you build an efficient home, you, uh, you don't actually have to have a, a, an oversized heating or cooling system in your home. You can actually downsize it a little bit. Uh, you increase the, the asset value, and then of course you, you can uh, uh, reduce carbon emissions, which is what we, our key driver is. But we actually don't talk about climate change very often um, because there's a whole range of reasons why people uh, want to reduce their power bills. So where do we use most of our energy? This is a really important pie graph because it really tells us uh, where we're going to start to focus on uh, our appliances and the places in the home to reduce power. So space heating is the biggest one. Uh, our power bills are starting to jump. I know mine are starting to jump now. As we get into the colder weather, uh, we put the heater on. And the heating is, is the, by far the biggest area that you'll be spending uh, money on uh, in terms of power bills and gas bills uh, particularly. So the next one is water heating and uh, our appliances. So you can see that all makes sense in terms of uh, how we live in our homes. Uh, and with space, with, with the heating units, um, yeah, obviously in summer it get, does get hot, but summer cooling is, is not as expensive as, as winter heating. So that gives us a bit of an idea of where we're going to go ahead 
in terms of uh, uh, what we're going to focus on in terms of reducing uh, our, our power bills. So what we're trying to achieve in, in all situations is to try and find that energy efficiency sweet spot. Uh, in new homes particularly, uh, there's a whole range of different interventions that you can make. Uh, so, but some of them we just don't recommend. So we could, I could advise you in an apartment to a whole range of things, uh, but we wouldn't necessarily recommend them. Um, so for example, you could put double glazing in there, but it's quite expensive. Uh, so, but there's, there's a range of other things we can do first. And uh, there's things, you know, there's expensive energy monitors that you can invest in, which you don't need to necessarily because you do have information on the energy portal. Uh, there's, there's expensive shading devices that, you know, retractable awnings and whatnot. They'll, they'll cost $10,000 uh, to install and to, and to buy. Uh, we'd recommend you invest that into solar. So one of the things I'd like you to take away today is to be really careful what you read about on the internet, uh, particularly just try, when you do read something, try and find the source and, and when it was actually put on the internet. Uh, there's information out there that's just old and uh, that old information is misinformation. So I get that quite regularly where somebody is, is keen to do, make some changes and they'll say, look, I thought this was the most efficient way to do something, I read it on the internet, uh, Dr. Google, all those sorts of things, uh, but the efficiency of new items has improved. So appliances is, is, the, is a big one, uh, whereby, apply, uh, for example, uh, split systems, they're a lot more energy efficient than they used to be five, 10 years ago. Same thing with heat pumps. Heat pumps are a lot more energy efficient now. Uh, so we're starting to recommend more of those products. Um, so just check, make sure on the internet uh, that you're, you're finding when it was actually dated. So to make it really simple, I'd just like to use a couple of principles that apply in every situation, uh, in your apartments, in your new homes, and we'll, we'll cover this. And uh, in that way, you'll be armed with the information to go into your home and actually start to look at how your home interacts or you interact with your home and how uh, the environment outside the home interacts with your home. So the first one is, is trying to use energy from the sun. Now that's number one, because solar power is becoming so affordable. Okay, yes, if you're in an apartment, you may not have a roof space that you own to put it on, uh, but you could potentially do that with a body corporate, uh, or you could buy green power. Uh, but the point there is, is that uh, solar power is becoming a lot more affordable. I don't know if any of you saw the, the business segment on ABC last night. I don't know if I, I watched that stuff, I shouldn't, but. <laughs> Um, they were talking about how now uh, businesses are investing in solar power farms uh, through direct capital. They're just getting loans from the bank. They're not actually doing purchasing power agreements. Uh, they're just building the farms and selling the energy on the spot market in WA because the banks are, are now prepared to finance it where before they had to have a group of people like in this room to say, yes, I'll buy your power and then they'll build the farm. Now they're building the farms and just selling the power. So there's a shift in the market uh, whereby uh, PV prices are coming so low that they, they're just being built. So in terms, I'll talk about the residential efficiency scorecard a little bit later on. That system rates a home or an apartment out of 10 stars. The, the value of solar is about three or four stars out of those 10. So it gives you an idea of, of how, how important solar is in the mix of uh, of your home and how you, how you reduce your power bills. So if that's worth four, then there's six stars that's related to energy efficiency. And uh, that's where we can start to work with the angle of the sun. So if unfortunately, uh, a lot of you being in apartments probably won't be facing north and particularly if you have uh, shared party walls, uh, but ideally if you are uh, having a northern orientation, then you'll obviously be able to have that light and that heat come into the room to actually warm your home without putting the heater on. So uh, that's critical. And then the other thing is to control the airspace. And uh, that is essentially to look at how uh, heat either comes in during the summer uh, or goes out during the winter. So the more we can control that airspace, we can condition it uh, to the temperature that we want it to be and uh, we're not wasting, wasting power. So if you understand those principles, then you are, are really got the tools to, to actually look at your own apartment, your own situation, because they're all different, uh, and, um, uh, and start to analyse how you might reduce your power bills the most effectively. As part of that is, is to actually design your living faces north or to uh, try and maximise that uh, winter sun. So the principle is sun rises in the east and sets in the west, uh, but in the north, uh, sorry, in the winter, it dips into the sky towards the north. So uh, you can imagine if this is East here in the summer, it's going to go right over the top of the building, 
Uh, but in the winter, it's still going to rise in the east, but it's going to dip around that way. So if you've got that window there, is exactly what you want, where you want to have your living spaces. So when you get home, if you don't already know, does anybody know which way the house is orientated? Yep, you probably do just by how the sun interacts with it. Uh, by knowing that, you can then understand which areas to shade. Uh, and, and also this information will be valuable for you when you start to look for a new home. So if you're going to rent somewhere else or if you're going to buy a house or buy an apartment or rent a, another home, this may be something that you, you look at uh, in terms of your own comfort in those homes. So it may not be applicable right now, but when you do move, uh, we're very transient, these might be some of the things that you think about. So it warms the house, lets the light in, it's great on, on the colder days and it just reduces your, your need for heating. So in reverse, in the summer, uh, we, want to, we want to try and keep that, keep that sun out. And uh, there's a range of things we can do. Uh, eaves on your, on your house or apartment. Anybody got eaves? Probably not if you're in apartments. Uh, external shading devices on the east and west of the windows is, is crucial. That just stops that sun from coming in the morning. And particularly in the afternoon is, is the, uh, the hottest part of the day. And uh, if you can reduce the window sizes. So obviously that's for a new build, but that's ultimately what you want to do. Uh, and the last thing is in internal blinds. You're better off stopping the heat from coming in in the first place than coming into the house and then hitting a blind. So, and typically we get that quite wrong. Um, it's always something that is, is left to the, uh, the homeowner to put on after a, an apartment or a home's built, uh, but really it should be part of the design and construction of a home. And uh, if it, it is the cheapest way to do it, because you'll actually spend a lot of money uh, on some of those devices internally, and it couldn't be spent on, on outside quite easily. So as part of, of uh, controlling the airspace is insulation. So you've probably all heard about the programs the government's been running over the last uh, number of years, but this is still the most effective way uh, to reduce your power bills is to install insulation. Obviously, again, depending on your home or your apartment, it's going to be a bit more difficult to do that. But this may well be one of the reasons why you find your, your home or your apartment is, is cold. Uh, because it doesn't have good insulation and it may be very difficult to retrofit that as well. If there's no roof space, there's nothing you can do about it. So some of these things you just, you'll have to just rule out and uh, you try and do the things that you know you can do. So what we're, our target for a new home is actually R6, which is, as you can see in that uh, picture there, it's about that thick. So most homes come in insulation about R1.52 and it's, it's very thin, so it's, you're just doing more of it. So ensure that you're, you're uh, Light covers, when they're installed, they also have a proper, if you do do this, that you have a proper cover that's put over that's safe to stop any, any fires. And always ask if you were to get an insulation upgrade into your home, that you ask your installer to, to take photos for you so that you can ensure that it's in, installed properly. The amount of times that we go into roofs, we still find them the insulation in the bags that they were put up there in is incredible. So I hear it all the time. Uh, so don't trust. If you, if you do feel like your home is unnaturally cold, then stick your head in the, into the, the hole in the roof and see if you can see what's happening with insulation. It's one of the first things that we'll be doing uh, when we assess a home is, is assessing the insulation. And, uh, if you, and also how the insulation spread out. If you have uh, less, I think it's less than 5%, 5 coverage missing out of your insulation, it can have a, a reduce your, the R factor uh, or the effectivity of your insulation by half just by missing 5% of your insulation across the roof space. So it's really important to ensure that it's installed correctly. The other thing is double, double glazing. Uh, retrofitting this in an apartment building is obviously possible. There are companies out there now that will provide a service that they will put in a, another glaze, another window into uh, the, uh, the existing frame and uh, they'll take the old one out. Uh, but still, it's quite an expensive retrofit. But it is it's something that um, will imp uh, certainly improve the efficiency of your home. And you don't necessarily have to do all windows. So bathrooms, for example, you can leave out. New homes are, are starting to become standard. So it's nearly on parity, the cost uh, between single and double glazing. And the other value of, of double glazing, obviously, is it reduces the noise. So if you are on a busy, window, a busy uh, road, having double glazed windows will, will help that. And uh, there's plenty of products coming on the market now that uh, are becoming more affordable. So just, just to understand windows a little bit more, it is really is the chink in the armour. So we, we do recommend that uh, people reduce their window sizes, in, particularly in new homes, obviously can't in, in existing homes, uh, unless there's obviously a great view out there. But you can see by that last point there, 
when we're just talking about U factors, uh, sorry, R factors, uh, comparing it to a wall bat, most walls, if they have insulation in them, will be at R2.5, which is a measure of its resistivity. Uh, double glazing is about 0.3, compared to single glazing of about 0.1. So you can see that even double glazing compared to a, a brick wall and insulation uh, is a lot higher. So it is where you'll find that you get a lot of heat transfer through your home. So if you, are, if you don't have uh, really good blinds at the moment, that they, that, that, you know, very heavy blinds, that would be an ideal thing to do in an apartment is to invest in some heavy blinds to stop that, that cold air coming in at night. So this is probably one of the big ones as well. If you're living in an older apartment, is, is draft sealing your home. So we've, we've covered insulation, we've covered double glazing, and this is the last one. If you do this, then essentially you're, you're creating an air tide who is starting to control the airspace. So there's no, there's no uh, performance standards that are regulated in Australia, and, uh, which is unfortunate, but we're, we're trying to get that cha change in the industry, and we're advocating for uh, draft sealing of homes. And the ACT, they do it, I understand. Uh, and certainly overseas, uh, it's, it's mandated as well. So it is one of the last things that needs to be regulated in our country um, to ensure that we uh, uh, don't have those drafts. We all have experiences of, of having a drafty home where you, you put the heater on, it's running out flat out all, all day, and uh, it's barely keeping the, the home or the apartment uh, warm. You can actually test one. You can test them in apartments. It's called a blower door test. What we're actually aiming for is about five to seven air exchanges per hour under 50 pascals of pressure, uh, which means essentially you'll have about a quarter of the airspace exchange uh, over an hour. So as opposed to a complete air exchange if you have a leaky home. So just by draft sealing your home well, and most of them will be poorly done, probably operating about 10 air exchanges per hour, uh, you can reduce your power bill by, or your heating bill by 75%. So that's, that's a massive change. And uh, we, we often test homes and they, they are performing at about 10 when they should be performing at about five air exchanges per hour under 50 pascals of pressure. So I just want to highlight the importance of actually draft sealing. It makes sense. If you've got a, a, a gap like that underneath your door, your front door, and most apartments will probably, uh, their door will walk into your living space, then you have a, a massive problem. That's the first thing you want to retrofit. So having, um, doing something there, either putting some, some foam there from Bunnings, and uh, there's a whole range of different um, devices that you can install to stop your drafts. Windows, the same thing. Uh, ensure that you have good closing windows or find something that can seal those up. Penetrations as well. Have a look underneath the sink, uh, in the toilet, and in the, the kitchen. If you're finding that there's big holes around the pipes that go outside, they need to be stopped up. That's a, 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 a huge area where you'll find that that'll leak um, hot, hot air. Same thing with your downlights as well. So sometimes you'll see downlights and you actually see the hole that have just been sat in there. And because the, the older downlights can't have insulation over them, you essentially have air leaking straight in, air rise, it starts to rise and uh, when it's hot, uh, and it just goes straight into the roof space. Um, so in apartments, if you've got somebody above you, then that's not going to be a problem. But like I said, you're probably going to find that being living in an apartment, you are, your power bill is comparative to most places, will be a lot lower. So draft ceiling is the final frontier that we are trying to get in, into this country, into Victoria. And um, that will make a significant difference to, to any apartment, to any new home. So once we've done that, then we start to look at the appliances. We've now controlled the airspace. And we said, okay, well, we need to put something efficient in there to, uh, to actually heat and cool that, that home. So obviously we want to be walk going away from oil heaters and radiant heaters that you'll see you know, for sale now in Bunnings for $20 or $30, but they'll be you know, 2,500 watts of power and your power bills will be in the, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of dollars just as a result of that one uh, appliance. So if you're a renter, you know, it's obviously a lot more difficult to um, make some of these bigger upgrades, uh, but this is, if you like, where we need to head. And uh, if, you, if you are renting and you can't do this, then yeah, there's the little things that you will make a difference. But to make a significant difference, we need to look at actually improving the efficiency of those appliances. So it's something, if you know that your, your home is really inefficient, uh, then you can ask your landlord 
and um, that may well be something that when you uh, look at renting a new home that you, you start to look at what actually is running that home. So by informing yourself with this information, it will help you make better decisions in the future about a particular home. When I talk about the Residential Efficiency Scorecard, that's a state government tool that actually rates a home. So it could potentially be in the future that they make that uh, a mandatory uh, disclosure, whereby rental properties will have to disclose how many stars the home is rated at. Now, if that's the case, then you'll have that hard work done for you. But in the meantime, you've got to pretty much arm yourself with the information yourself so that you can assess a home, not just its features, but also how it's likely to perform uh, from, a, from an energy efficiency point of view. So we're moving away from um, the old evaporative cooler and also gas ducted heating, which is pretty common these days. Everything's going to electric. And the reason why, as well, I mentioned before, is that solar is becoming a lot more affordable. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, evaporative coolers, when you actually tighten your, your home, so I'll do all the things I've just mentioned before, you, when you need to put the heating on, uh, the cooling on, you've actually got to open a, a window or a door to make it work effectively. So you've, actually, you've, you've lost control of your airspace and uh, that's, it, it defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to achieve. So um, by controlling that airspace, then you can put a, a split system in there that uh, a reverse cycle split system that can heat and cool, uh, and you put it on, it will run less. You run it on a thermostat, and it'll run a lot less than if you have a, a, a drafty home. So that's where we're going towards, is, is more of the uh, uh, electric um, reverse cycle systems and moving away from, from gas. Gas prices are volatile, we don't know where they're headed, but ultimately if we invest in solar, then that's gonna keep our prices down. So all of this really works together. It is a perfect storm that's coming together. And um, uh, if you are able to make these decisions and move in that direction, then in time, you'll find that you will take control of your power bills. So the other point I'd make, as you saw in that pie, is that hot water is, uh, is a big issue. And uh, thankfully, again, the technology has just advanced so much uh, in years gone by. Uh, and now it's mandatory to have a solar hot water system in a new home and those rental places or homes that you own and are upgrading, uh, you, you're gonna find it'll be an efficient hot water heater. Again, I'd, I'd recommend if you're gonna put solar, if you have solar on the home, don't have a gas hot water service. So if you have gas, you know, if you have a chance to change your heating unit from, from either gas, uh, then change it away from gas, because then you'll have a solar system to, to actually run the thing. It just defeats the purpose. If you, if you have a gas, gas ducted heating, then you have uh, gas hot water service, then there's no point putting solar on your roof because that's you're using all, all your appliances are being used using gas. Um, so that's where you've kind of got to make a shift uh, towards electric to make this worthwhile. So that's where we're headed. And ultimately, we're, yeah, like I said, is solar is where we, we want to uh, end up on and um, all green power. So that essentially the, the key, the key uh, recommendations that we make when we talk to anybody um, about uh, energy efficiency. And um, I could talk for a whole day on solar, there's so much about it. Uh, I'm just gonna very briefly talk about, um, there are about three different tiers of quality of panels. So if you are looking into, into it, uh, you will find a, a lower tier that's cheaper, uh, but the higher tiers are a lot more expensive, but they're a lot more efficient and reliable. And um, there are a lot of good panels out there now. There's a lot of good inverters out there now. And uh, you'll find that um, a lot of the, the cheaper stuff is gone, again, because they've improved their methods and you know, it's a booming market. We're just starting to see of it. If you look at the bell curve of solar uptake, we're down the bottom still. We're, we haven't, we're not even close to uh, where this will head in the next um, couple of decades. And uh, the key thing out of solar is that people don't realise is that you'll get a warranty on your panels. You'll get a warranty on your inverter but also get a warranty on the installation. So that's the key thing when, when you look for a, a solar installer, ensure that they're gonna warranty at least for seven years, like a normal builder's warranty. And that way they're gonna put good components in. Most of the time when you get a, a fire in a solar system, it's the way the electrician has plugged it all together. Uh, that's when the issues really come or where they've, how they've plugged it into the roof, how they've fixed it to the roof. So um, if, it's, if it's the panel or the inverter, well that's, you take that, that part of the appliance off and you, you replace it. So the, the warranty on that's really important. So 
Behaviour change is probably, if you're renting, one of the most effective things that you can do. Generally, if you own your home, well, this is absolutely something you can do as well. And uh, understanding what's comfortable. Now, if you're, we all have different uh, likes and dislikes in terms of comfort. So some of us like a hot room and some of us like a cold room, and I'll let you guys fight that out between the, each other. Uh, but we, we talk about summer cooling being between 20 and 26 degrees, and uh, we talk about winter heating uh, between 18 and 20 degrees. So I've got some thermometers over there that you're welcome to take. And uh, on the sheet, it actually goes through this and uh, you can start to get an idea of what's a, uh, an appropriate sort of level, if you like, um, of heating and cooling. And there's also your freezer and, and your hot water service to check out as well in your fridge. So by just making those adjustments, you might be surprised that um, some of those appliances are running hotter or cooler than they actually should be. Uh, but this is generally accepted as the range in which you should be operating. You certainly will mo notice a massive difference in your heating bill. If you are currently operating at say 22 degrees or 24 degrees, which I you know, have to confess I have in the past had it that high, um, if you drop it down just those two to four degrees, you'll find that it, it's going to be a substantial drop in your power bills. So if you can keep around that 18 degrees and have a jumper on, uh, that's going to be the most effective way to reduce your power bill. So forget installing a new heater for now, just try, try this. this. You'll be surprised at what a difference that makes. Um, and if you want to buy green power, then we'll, you know, or install a solar panel, you can have it a bit higher maybe. But you know, I think that the lesson out of this is that we don't want to be Scrooges about it, we don't want to be too purist about it, um, but you know, we, all of these things work together. If that's not going to make you uncomfortable, then absolutely um, try it out. Uh, and of course, when we get sick, we like to have the, the room a bit warmer. And when we get older, we like to have the room a lot warmer. I mean, how often have you been to the grandparents and they've got it up at that 22, 24 degrees? They just need it. So, you know, you've just got to accept that that's what we need to do. So maybe you start to then look at installing solar and um, those sorts of things. So my time's rapidly going. That's the, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, that's, if you like, all the advice that I can give you and um, of the benefits of uh, energy efficiency. I hope that's been suitable for your situation. Yeah.